Welcome to Colorado, 47. The militia has taken up HQ at an old apricot farm and appear to be training for a series of coordinated strikes, ranging from cyber attacks to full-blown guerrilla warfare. The Shadow Client appears to unite specialists and radicals from all over the map. Mercenaries and terrorists, hackers and spies joined by an unknown common cause. Satellite scans indicate that the command room is below ground inside an old tornado shelter. Only Rose appears to have access, however, so to get inside, you will need to get creative. This environment is hostile and highly alert, so tread carefully. Good luck, 47. Hi, I'm Jimmy, and this is a Let's Play series of the Hitman World of Assassination Trilogy. I will be playing all of the story missions on Master Difficulty with the default start locations and loadout. And here we are doing Colorado. Colorado... Uh, this is... No other way to say it. This is definitely the worst level uh, in the new Hitman trilogy. Uh, it's, you know, it's in Colorado, so it's not a particularly exotic location. and not like a fun place to visit. Um, the whole place is a fortress. There's no area for 1847 to explore in his suit. Um, you basically have to get a disguise before you can wander around anywhere. And even once you do get a disguise, there are, are a lot of areas that are secure, like that only only allow one disguise. Like there's Here's the bomb range. You need to have a specific disguise to get here. There's the shooting range, which you need another disguise to get there. And then there's the house with the basement. You need a third disguise to get in there. So... There isn't, like, one Not disguise right now, that lets you go please. anywhere. Um, and there are just a lot of enforcers. Even once you get a disguise, it feels like there are just way too many people who can see through your disguise. So, like, you never relax playing this mission. You're sort of always in stealth mode, sneaking around. So, I think all that adds up to this being Not a very fun experience. Plus, it just, you know, everyone's carrying a gun. So, if you make a mistake, if you get spotted... You now, you have to fight, you know, an entire military base worth of people. So, it just, it, it ends up, this, this mission, you know, ends up playing more like a traditional stealth game, which is just not what Hitman excels at. Hitman excels when, you know, there's more subtlety, when there are, there's more room for different approaches, and there's more room for... You know, blending in and, and masquerading as someone you're not. And this level just doesn't have a lot of that, relatively speaking. Oh, one thing I want to mention, uh, for this whole series, I, obviously I haven't really been planning out the routes ahead of time. But for this one in particular, I uh, there's a lot of times where I'm just waiting. So I'm going to fast forward through those bits. So far, these videos have been just unedited gameplay footage. This is still, you know, it's going to be unbroken, but there's going to be periods where I speed it up because I'm just waiting for something to happen and nothing interesting is going on or I'm not doing anything interesting so that'll make this video go a little faster yeah the other thing that's uh about this level is it has four targets which is a lot like I you know I like normally having four targets like a lot of the Hitman 2 levels have three targets and those are a lot of fun but here just because it's on this sort of militia compound and there's no real opportunities for you know disguising or it's much harder to disguise and blend in and there's no there's no times where you can just relax and, and explore freely it feels like you're always looking over your shoulder it just isn't as much fun and having the extra targets and the extra objective of needing to sneak into the basement just makes the challenge that much harder you can tell like they sort of designed this is the second to last mission in Hitman 1, they felt like they probably felt like they needed to like ramp up the difficulty, but this wasn't a great way to do it. Yeah. So here I'm, I'm leaving a coin trail. I'm going to lure someone someone away. I'm just leaving a coin trail just so they spend a lot of time following these coins, and they give me more time to uh, knock someone out. Um, I'm trying to get in this little shed here. Um, one I, lets me get a disguise, um, but also it gives me access to some items. And it gives me access to an opportunity to kill Ezra Berg over there. So yeah, now I'm going to distract someone over here. I was just waiting for Ezra to walk past. Now I'm going to use the fruit to make a noise. That'll 
lure someone over here, and then they'll start following the points. And that'll be plenty of time to knock out his buddy. Oh. See so yeah, there, I'm waiting for him to walk I heard away. Some. Checking it out. Over. Okay. So now I'm just waiting for this guy to turn around so I can knock him out. And yeah, you see the other guys, he's there yet. Yeah, now you see he's, he's going and looking and picking up all the coins I left for him. So now I throw the wrench to knock this guy out. I hide his body. Pick up the stuff he dropped. I pick up his gun. That's important because he's. If someone sees the gun lying around, uh, they'll chase it, and uh, they'll, they'll pick up the gun and they'll put it away. So I don't want anyone to do that, so I don't leave the gun lying around. Okay, now he comes back, turns around. Now I do the same trick on him, I get the wrench, and I throw it in the back of his head. And there, now I've uh, knocked both these guys unconscious, and... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to pick up all the stuff he dropped. Take his outfit. Hide his body and take his outfit. I'm just going to pick up, you know, the rip. Pick my coins back up. Pick up the wrench. And the gun, so no one finds it. Oh, there, I pick up. I dropped a gun when I went out through the window. I decided to hide the gun in the trash can. Just, again, so no one finds it and tries to put it away. So here I loosen the valve here. This is step one of setting up a kill for Ezra Berg. Now the next time he goes to use that Bunsen burner, it's going to set off an explosion. So there I found, uh, oh yeah, there was the nitroglycerin, and there's the lethal poison. So I think that's all I need. Oh yeah, watch this. Is Here's a video. Ezra Berg is interrogating someone in the basement, and this is just the video he has to monitor that interrogation. So... So now I'm going to set up another kill for Penelope Graves. Oh yeah, one thing I should comment on. Uh, so normally for Hitman levels, the sort of story of the mission is not, at least so far, the story of the mission hasn't really tied in that closely with the story of the game. The sort of missions have been their own thing where you're just contracted to kill someone and then there's been a story going on. But here they're sort of starting to tie it together. So. Uh, in the briefing for this one, so basically, Agent 47 is known for a while that there's someone they refer to as the Shadow Client, who is basically convincing people to hire the ICA to assassinate specific targets. And this person is basically sort of behind the scenes manipulating and using the ICA to advance some unknown agenda. And uh, Agent Diana has been, or Diana has been looking into it, and she has managed to discover this militia that is working with the Shadow Client. Uh, so this is our first solid lead on the sh who the Shadow Client might be. And once we find out about it, the ICA, uh, people in the ICA pushed really hard to, um, yeah, to go after the, um, the Shadow Client. So that's what we're doing now. We're going here. We are going to wipe out all of the top uh, sort of officers, I guess, at this militia and hopefully discover and eliminating the Shadow Client as well. So, yeah, that's sort of the story, the story of the sort of the plot of the game so far. So that's why we're here. Um, yeah, I just want to give you that context because at the end of the mission, we're going to see some more story and I don't want you to like drop into that and have no idea what's going on or what's happening. So now I have this disguise so I can go into the house. This is one of two disguises that can go up to the house. It's this and the hacker disguise. So here I'm just taking out the camera. Don't want to get spotted going into the house. And there, just some bad luck. They notice the sound of the bullet. So now Nature, everyone's sort of on high alert okay. for a little bit. I don't know. It feels random to me whether or not shooting out a camera will alert the guards. It feels like half the time it does and half the time it doesn't. And I can't figure out. This is Papa Charlie. What I have arrived is. at the location and it looks clear. Over. Yeah, I'm 
now that they're on alert, a lot more people are like on the lookout so they can see through my disguise. So I've got to wait till everyone calms down and goes back to their routines. And I'm sort of hi trying to find a place where I can hide or they won't spot me. Fuck. But yeah. And now he's putting his gun away and yep, yeah, he's no longer an enforcer. So yeah, everyone's just sort of going back to their day. And now I can get in the house. I mean, it's kind of a bummer that uh, this mission, which is so critical to the story, is, you know, the worst one so far, and, and I think really the worst one in the game. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just disappointing. Like, one of the things I think they could have done, because they always had this idea of, like, having it be a military base, um, but I feel like having it be, like, a legitimate military installation would have felt better, because of the fact that it's... A militia in Colorado makes it feel like Agent 47 is just, you know, hunting down a bunch of, you know, good old, like a bunch of like amateurs, a bunch of guys with guns. Like, I, you know, when I think of like a militia in Colorado, I don't think, oh, a trained crack military squad. I think a bunch of, you know, guys with guns who think they're hardcore but aren't. So I would have felt, it would have felt more like I was a trained assassin if I was going after. I mean, within this context of the story, this is supposed to be a, you know, formidable military po force, but, uh, I don't know, just the fact that it's like a militia group in Colorado makes you think it's more like a bunch of amateurs than a Keep being vigilant, soldier. So, yeah, here I am waiting. There's, there's an enforcer up here. Ah, uh, here, I'm using a 3D printer to print out a copy of Sean Rose's face. That's going to sort of notify the other hackers in the room, so they're going to be looking around to see who did that. Come on. But yeah, you need you need Sean Rose's face to get into the bunker, so you can do it if you manage to drag Calm Sean down. Rose's body it down to the basement. Nothing. You can use that, but the easier way to do it is to just use the 3D printer up here, print out the face, and then pick it up when no one's looking. And there. So there I managed to get to now. I have access to the bunker. Um, I've set up Penelope Greaves' kill. At this point, I think I've shut up Sean, or not Sean, Ezra Berg. I think I've, you know, set things up to kill him. I actually, there's actually one more step that I forgot about that I need to do. Um, but yeah, because of that, I, I sort of am starting to feel like I'm getting close to halfway. And I'm starting this, the first steps for what I think, what I'm planning to be... I'm, I'm hoping to do a double kill here. It doesn't work out. Uh, but because of all that, because I think I've got two kills set up, because I think I have, because I know I have access to the bunker, and because I think oh, I'm going to be able to pull up a double kill later, I'm starting to think like, oh, maybe I'm, you know, halfway through the level, and I start thinking about saving now. But uh, it turns out, A, I have one more step to do for Ezra uh, to get his kill set up. I keep dropping the gun. I think I was, had an idea that I would... Oh yeah, here I'm going to fast forward, because now I'm just waiting for Sean Rose uh, to leave. I dropped the gun on the floor. I was I think I was originally planning to like use the gun, like put it on the ground, have the guard pick it up and walk away, just as a way to get the guard out of the way. But outside. I ended up deciding not to do that. So here, now Sean Rose has gone downstairs, so here I make my first save. And here's me loading the game. So yeah, now here's how things go after the save. So after saving, Seriously, I decide the first one. thing I want to do is take up the, the, the video footage. Best one yet. Okay, it's popped so up a notification that like you've been recorded desk. by camera a few times, but the I'll silent assassin indicator clock. still is green, which normally that should be yellow if I was Running caught on camera. But um, right, right. Oh, man, anyway, I decide <laughs> to just keep, play it safe and take up the camera. So, okay, yeah, Sean Rose and his bodyguard are still down here, so I have to go around and avoid them. No. But yeah. Still. Basically, I go around here, and while I'm doing that, Sean Rose and his bodyguard leave, so I'm able to get into over into this room. And from here, I'm going to take up the, the, the evidence. Pull up my gun. Just getting ready. Yeah, I'm going to... But yeah, I think I, I don't know if I finished my thought, but I think one of the ways they could have made it better is if they made this, like, more of a legitimate military base. Um, it would have made it feel more like Asian 47 was dealing with a legitimate threat instead of just 
taking out some, you know, would be, you know, gun nuts, basically. Uh, the other thing is, like, if it had been in, like, a proper military installation, like, they could have had more enclosed spaces. The other thing that makes this level feel so nerve-wracking is, you know, there's a, a lot of people who can see through your disguise, but it's also, like, very open. Like, if you do anything suspicious or try to take anyone out, it's very hard to, like, be by yourself or be alone. Um, because there just aren't a lot of enclosed spaces where you can hide or where you can do things, you know, just by yourself. So, like, having an installation that was more indoors would have also helped. I think it would have made the level more fun to, like, would have given you more opportunities to, like, hide and sneak around. Whereas here, it feels like you're just sort of always, you know, you have eyes on you from all directions all the time. That's why I end up doing, in this level, I do, like, one poison kill and the rest are all accident kills uh, because it's just too hard to like isolate people and and take them out and hide the body okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out I'm going to try and knock out one of the hackers upstairs to get his phone that's the sort of next step of the the method I'm using to kill Sean Rose so first I'm going to take out this guard because he's an enforcer and it's just very hard to do anything on this floor without him seeing you so I sneak up behind him, and once he's well out of way, I knock him out. And I hide the body. There are two guys in the room here playing video games, but they're not really paying attention. So you can sneak right behind them, and they don't even notice you. And here I do another trick of laying a coin trail to sort of lure the hacker over here. That's just so I can get him in this corner where I can knock him out without any of the other hackers in the room seeing him. So I do the coin trail leading up to here, and then I turn on the gramophone. And there he notices it, but he notices it as he's going to the other room, and he ends up turning it off and not noticing the coin just because of how his patrol work group works. So he turns it off, and then he just immediately turns right, because that's where he was going anyway. So he doesn't turn to the left and see the coin. So I just have to try again, and it works the second time. I'm just waiting for him to get back into position where he can notice the gramophone playing. So I turn it on again. And he notices it. <gasps> so he goes to turn it off. And this time he's going to turn around and head back to his computer, and at which point he's going to turn left and see the coins. There, see the question mark? That's the, oh, hey, I see something. And there he's noticing the coin, so now he's gonna, he just follows the trail. Yes, you are the man. So funny how excited everyone in the Hitman universe is to pick up a single coin. Killer. So yeah, I'm knocking him out because he's carrying a phone. Um, that's a phone that I can use to call the smartwatch, uh, Sean Rose's smartwatch, and I'm going to booby trap that with an explosive. So that will result in an accident kill. So here, I just pick up my coins again and the phone, and now I can leave the house. So now I need to do, I'm going to do the next step of uh, Ezra Berg's assassination, which is I need to get him to use the Bunsen burner. To do that, you um, mess with the guy he's interrogating, and apparently that will, once you do that, he decides that he needs to change, you know, make some changes to the drugs he's administering 
to the prisoner, and then when he does that, he goes to use his Bunsen burner, and that causes the explosion, which kills him. So I'm just waiting. Yeah, oh, and I get here right as he's going down into the basement, so I end up waiting a while here. So I have to wait for him to go into the basement, and then for him to leave again. Or actually, no, I think what I do... Yeah, I remember what I did now. Yeah, so I wait for him to go inside, and then that door down there is locked. So I decide just a way to make it easier for me to get into is I'm going to unlock the door with a jar of nitroglycerin. I'm waiting till that guy turns around so he doesn't see me throw the throw the bottle. So I guess technically this is also a pretty loud uh, silent assassin run because there's two explosions in this mission as well. But uh, open. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, the explosions feel less out of place Jeez, in Colorado. Geez, you know, there's people the testing with explosions the over at the safe. There's just people, there's five people firing at the gun range. It's so sort of already a very loud level. So what's a few more explosions here or there? Now I'm going to go over here, and this is the next long patch of waiting, is here I wait till... Oh, actually, no, first I'm going to knock these guys out just to make my job, make my life easier. You mean a Mexican man's? Yeah, I'm going to wait till... Sean Rose comes in here and he takes off his watch to wash his hands, because he's he's a bit obsessive. Um, so he washes his hands a lot. So here's just an opportunity where you can replace the watch in this battery with one that's set to explode. Uh, yeah, so I'm just waiting for the right opportunity to knock both these guys out. I'm waiting until the guy on the left moves. It's generally the safest thing to do when you don't know someone's patrol routes yet. It's just to wait for, wait until right after people move. They usually, like, after they move, they stay in one spot for a little while. So, now that they both just moved, I know they're going to be at their position for a while. So that gives me time to knock them both out without worrying that they'll turn around and see me. Here. Someone outside the window caught a glimpse of me, but just for a little bit, and they didn't spot me, so. So yeah, I hide both the bodies, and I'm going to pick up their guns, and the wrench, and I threw. Here again, I hide the, gu hide the shotgun in the trash can. I don't want anyone getting distracted by that and feeling like they have to put it away. So yeah, now I just need to wait for Sean Rose to go through his patrol route and come here again. Actually, now do I decide to... I think now I decide to go into the basement. Yeah, that's what it is. Hello, sir. So yeah, I come over here and I think I realize, yeah, Sean Rose is still in the basement. He's like just leaving now. So apparently after the explosion, he freaked out for a little bit and it took him a while to get back on his routine. But now he's finally leaving. Him and his bodyguard are going to leave the basement. His bodyguard is lagging behind a bit, but he'll come out soon. Technically this guy, I don't think he's Ezra Berg's bodyguard, but he follows him into the basement and out again. And he can see through my disguise, so I have to watch out for him. So I'm just waiting for him to come out of the basement. Okay, now I'm going to slip behind him and go into the basement. There, I got very lucky. I should have waited for him to finish his movement. Uh, like I was suggesting earlier, it's a good idea to wait till people finish moving. Like, he almost, he very easily could have seen me out of the corner of his eye, and I could have gotten spotted there, throwing the wrench at him. And then he would have been an unconscious witness, and it would have, you know, ruined my silent assassin rating. So, luckily that did not happen. Now I'm going to administer an overdose. 
that will cause Ezra Bird to fiddle with the Bunsen burner and turn it on, and that will yeah, that will cause the explosion. So now Ezra Berg's uh, kill is all set. Now I just need to sneak back out of the basement. Did you see the moon last night? I'll tell you something you don't know, right? The moon and the sun are actually the same thing. I'm going to go back to the barn and you know, wait for Sean Rose to come so I can swap out his watch battery. Here, I'm just waiting for Sean Rose to come back. It just takes a while for him to do. He says he has a very long patrol. Body. Here we see Train Ezra Berg now. blew himself up. So that's two targets Sweet down. Get this. She used to be an assassin and gun runner for now the we wait tigers. So yeah, now you can say we're halfway done, or a little more than halfway done, because we've got the face that we can use to get into the bomb shelter, and we've taken out the surveillance footage. But unfortunately, my plan for a double kill doesn't work out. So yeah, here's Sean Rose. He's coming into the barn. His bodyguard waits outside, which is convenient. And now he takes the watch off to go wash his hands. And there's no one else in here to see me do this, so I can just go in and insert the explosive battery. And there you hear Sean Rose Everywhere. freaked out about the possibility of germs. Gotta rip it down. Yep. And here we're fast forwarding again. Here I'm waiting because I think that Sean Rose is going to go talk to Maya and I'll be able to set, I'll be able to, you know, call the smartwatch and set off the explosion while they're both standing next to each other. But for whatever reason, they don't talk to each other. I basically watch his whole patrol route and... You know, between waiting for him to come into the barn and waiting just now. I've seen his whole route, and he never talks to Maya. I don't know if there's something else you need to do to get them to talk to each other, or if it just doesn't happen on Master Difficulty, or maybe they're avoiding each other because the other two targets have been killed and everybody's on high alert. I don't know, but for whatever reason, the double kill doesn't work out. So now I'm just getting close to him. I just want to make sure he's alone when I set off the smartwatch so I don't accidentally get a, a non-target kill. So I see he's standing by Good himself job, in front of the clock. So I set it off. And there he goes. He checks his email and boom. Email. Boom. So Sean Rose confirmed down. Nice there to we go. Now I just have to uh, take out Maya. She's the last target. Um, luckily, yeah, there's an easy way to take out Maya. There's a couple ways to take her out. There's one that's normally pretty easy. I try one method that also doesn't work, or I have trouble getting it to work. Um, so yeah, I want to use this opportunity. You can you know, create an oil link there and then set it on fire. The problem is that that guy working on the Jeep, he goes over there to smoke, so you have to like knock him out. Otherwise, he'll go and his smoking will set off the trap early. Um, so I sort of scoped that out, and I realized... That's probably not going to work. If, if I want to knock him out, I'm probably going to have to knock out the other guy. The guy in the middle there. So. Yeah, here I'm just sort of thinking about what can I do. I can try and lure him in there, but I decide I decide instead to... My next idea is I can set up an, another accident over by this van here. And to do that, I just need to lure away the guy who's working on it and knock him out and hide, hide his body, and then I can... Set up an accident there. I've seen monkeys pack up shit faster than you're doing right now. Get a move on it. If we don't get this shipped across the border soon, the yeah, there's an oil barrel there, and you can again, Got you it, can, man. you can I'll try puncture it, improve. create an oil spill, and then set it on fire. But to do that without noticing, I want to try and get rid of this guy. So I turn off the generator, and then they'll come over and investigate and turn it on. What? For some, usually when I do this, he comes around the other side and I'm able to knock him out. 
But for that time, he just he just turned it off from the other side. So, yeah, that was frustrating that that didn't work. That normally works. Normally, you're able to knock him out and get him out of the way really easily doing that. But anyway, I finally decide to just go for the hay bale method, which is a pretty pretty reliable strategy. Um, it's not as much fun, but it gets the job done. So yeah, you basically just. As she's coming out of the barn, she stands right under that hay bale. So if you shoot it, it'll fall on her head, and that counts as an accident kill. So here I am. I'm just lining up the shot. And yeah, I can stand here. No one sees me. There's there's a, a sort of a short wall between me and the guard, so they don't see me while I'm you know firing my weapon. And yeah, this is a, just a really convenient method. Hey, now I should need to wait for Maya to come out of the barn. And I can end her, and I can finish the mission. Just making sure my aim is still on. Okay, she's just inside the barn. She's... Training her soldiers there. She's sort of preparing them for an operation they're going to carry out. Obviously, that operation is not going to happen. She's not going to live. So, yeah, now I'm just waiting, waiting for her to exit the barn and I can take her out. And then I can leave the mission. But yeah, I guess I'm going to talk a little bit about difficulty. I guess one of the things is that it's interesting that they're exploring different ways to make the game difficult, but, uh, yeah, I think they realize this is not, uh, not a good fit for a Hitman game. I think if people wanted to play, you know, Metal Gear Solid or Splinter Cell or something like that, those games exist, you know, like, pure stealth action games exist, you know, this is, if people, you know, want to play Hitman, they want something a little different, and, yeah, this feels more like you're just sort of playing a not as good level of Splinter Cell. Or I mean, Metal Gear Solid, I guess. I don't know. Some other action stealth game that's more focused on running around and shooting people. So yeah, finally she's coming out, and I time it, I shoot it, so that I shoot it as she's leaving. I think she probably stands under it for a little bit, so I don't think you have to, like, shoot it early like the idea. Maya Parvati is down. I just Good work. wanted to make sure I got her. Yeah, copy that. Understood. So yeah, now we are good. I just need to get into the basement, and we are good to exit the mission. What's this I hear about it? Hi there, grunt. So yeah, there's the enforcer. I just wait for him to shift positions just so I know where he'll be. I don't want to like be sneaking past him when he decides to move and walk somewhere else. So he just stands over there and stands to the side. and I just go down and I crouch just so he doesn't see me out of the corner of his eye. He gets us a bit of a glimpse as I'm going in, but yeah. Now I'm able to use the copy of Sean Rose's face and get into the bunker. And here we learn about the Shadow Client. The plot thickens. Someone left in a hurry. Sean Rose was not the Shadow Client. That much is clear. Whoever commands the militia, they got out just in time. Look around, 47. We're getting closer. Some kind of network. Power players from all sectors. Familiar faces, too. Thomas Cross, Klaus Strandberg, Ether. And that's missing banker Eugene Cobb. Well, well. There's a name Providence. What? No. No, it can't be. The Hidden Hand. Thought they were a myth. A hypothesis, nothing more. 
The idea that a small cabal of kingmakers controlling enough corporate and political leaders could effectively run the world in secret. Maybe not so hypothetical. Keep looking, 47. We need full disclosure. Someone's done their homework. Look how far it dates back. Hayamoto, Beldingford, Delvade. The Shadow Client has been tracking you for decades. Now how is that possible? It isn't. Every one of those missions were branded as unsolved or accidents. He must have been looking for a pattern, a certain M.O., which would mean... He knows me. Well, at least this shortens so, yeah, the list. So yeah, those names were targets from the earlier Hitman games. So it implies that the earlier Hitman games are canon. They happened in this uh, game's timeline. Found something. So does. But that would mean... Providence has infiltrated ICA, and Eric Sodas is their operative. Bastard! It all fits! He was the one who persuaded the rest of the ICA board to greenlight this operation. This changes everything. Get out, 47. We got what we came for. What about the Shadow Client? He is no longer our primary concern. ICA has been compromised. I always wondered if Providence was real, but I never actually... I will need to confer with the board, but mark my words, 47. This so will have consequences. Now we have a reason to go after Sodor, so that's... Like I said, that's sort of the arc of the first game, sort of ends with taking out the trailer, opposed to entering the ICA. Yeah, we're just gonna go and see and confirm that I got Silent Assassin on this mission. See you in the next video. Goodbye.